everybody. Welcome to Monday Morning Must Knows. My name is Merlin Ralph, and what a week we had. Normally, the indexes all follow the same trajectory, right? Give or take a couple percentage points. Well, last week, we saw a pretty mixed market. The S&P, the Dow, the Russell, all down for the week. Crypto up well because of the Ethereum ETF announcement, but tailing off near the end of the week. And then there's one kind of shining light out there, and that's NVIDIA. After their earnings last Wednesday, after the market closed, man, what jubilation over the AI sector. They blew out earnings and really saved the NASDAQ, which pushed that index in a totally different path from the other ones. NASDAQ closing at all-time highs, closing all-time intraday highs, setting an all-time high. It is just roaring 20s for the NASDAQ. Of course, people loving that one if you're long on it, and we'll see if that trend continues. Now, we don't have any groundbreaking, earth-shattering economic and earnings announcements happening this week, but there are some important ones which may be in your portfolio, so let's just kick things off and get started with your earnings calendar for the upcoming trading week. Now, I do have 504 companies reporting this week. On Monday, there's nothing. On Tuesday, I got nothing. On Wednesdays, when we start to see some stuff, you've got Salesforce, Allegiant, UiPath, and Abercrombie & Fitch. Now, UiPath is a very small cap company, but I like it because it's one of those AI companies doing something actually with AI, as opposed to, hey, I can write something and I'll have AI rewrite it for me. This is an industrial application for UiPath. So it's an interesting one. We'll see how that one goes, as well as Abercrombie & Fitch, because over the last couple of weeks, we've had a lot of retail companies reporting, as well as retail sales. And those numbers have been rather mixed. Normally, it's pretty one-sided or the other, rather very bullish or very bearish. Now, all of a sudden, things are kind of looking, you know, shoulder shrug iffy with regards to where our market's going to be headed with retail sales. So, thought I would keep that one on there for you for your upcoming trading week. But the real fun starts on Thursday. Thursday, we get Costco, Dell Computers, Marvell Technology, Dollar General, NTAP, Ulta Beauty, and Best Buy. And that's it. That wraps up your week of earnings a few good names in there. Of course, we miss the Microsofts, the Apple, Amazons, all those. I wish we could get those every week, but got to wait once a quarter to get those ones. But Costco will probably be a pretty interesting one. They've been doing rather well. Now let's shift focus and go to the housing markets. This week is a trifecta of housing data, which is a good thing for the markets. It adds a lot of volatility for us short-term traders. That's what we really, really want. So let's go look at your housing market. Again, I have a trifecta of data coming at you, two of them happening at the same time. The first one is the S&P K-Shiller Composite 20 Home Price Index happening Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And at that exact same time, you get the HPI month over month change again Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And your third piece of housing data is pending home sales, which will be Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, of course, all of these could have an impact on the market on those specific days, specifically for any real estate ETFs or home builders, depending on which housing data it is. But I wanted to take a look at the S&P Case-Shiller Composite 20 Home Price Index. Now, some of you may not know exactly what this represents. This represents the median price of homes in 20 major metropolitan areas of the United States. So take basically 10 big cities and say, what's going on with house prices there? As you can see right behind me where my head is blocking it, we've been on a very nice uptrend going back to middle of 2023. It seems like every month we're getting higher and higher and higher. This is a good thing for anybody who owns a home and for markets in general, because as we see this little piece continue to move up, that means wealth is being created. Now, it might be paper profits, might be paper wealth because people just aren't you know, going to sell their homes right away, but it does lead us to more money in the economy. As the prices of homes get higher, when those people do sell, there is more capital out there, and that, of course, drives spending. So we want to kind of continue to see this one moving up, especially if you own a home. Well, what's the expectation? Previous number was 7.3, as you can see there on the screen. And the expectation right now is we're looking at 75 for the S&P K-Shiller Composite 20 Home Price Index. This is a good thing because that will show continuation of price acceleration. Now, of course, for those of you who are no longer homeowners or have never owned a home, you don't want to see this, right? You want to see this just crumbling to zero and going underneath so you can find some affordable homes to buy, especially if you live out here in California, man. It is very expensive to buy a home in California, and this chart just proves it's probably going to continue to get more and more expensive. Bottom line is, this is a good indicator as to money and wealth creation in the United States, so we do want to see this one moving up if you are bullish on the markets. And our final piece of information, I got one left to deal with, and of course, that has to do with inflation. We had our CPI and PPI numbers come out a couple weeks ago, and they were very different, right? We had one showing inflation is back, and the other one showing, nope, no inflation is actually going down. So what are we to believe? 
Well, when you listen to Jerome Powell of the FOMC, <clears throat> he doesn't really cite CPI or PPI. He says we're looking at the core PCE price index, and here it is. As you can see, the chart does have some elevated readings on the right-hand side of it, and that's simply because of what happened with COVID and all the other factors to our market, the printing of money and the creation of inflation. Now, on the hard right edge there, you can see it says 0.3. Now, the expectations as we speak, and this could certainly change by Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. when this announcement comes out, but the expectations are right now that we are going to come in line at 0.3, saying the same. That would represent three months of having the exact same core PCE price index numbers. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing, you might be asking? Well, remember, this is a monthly reading. So if we take 0.3 and times that by 12 months, you're now looking at 3.6% inflation. That's not really a good number in the eye of the Fed. Remember, they're targeting 2%. So that means that inflation is somewhat persistent and slightly higher than the Fed's expectations, which may lead them to keep rates where they are at for a longer period of time. Now, some of my colleagues believe we're actually going to get a rate hike this year. And we've seen a dramatic shift in the expectations of rates for 2024. You might recall by December of 2023, everybody was saying eight rate cuts. Not everybody. I was not saying eight rate cuts, but they're saying eight rate cuts in 2024. And then all of a sudden we got to March and it's like, well, five rate cuts. We got to April, oh, three rate cuts. And now a lot of people saying we're not going to get any. I do believe we'll have one rate cut simply to juice the markets for the presidential election. But it has been a, a substantial shift in the expectations. And why? Because of this inflation data. Now, if we see that inflation data for core PCE price index tick up to, let's say, 0.4%, then all of a sudden, most people will be talking about rate increases in 2024, which, of course, the markets would not like to see. At this point, it's kind of a waiting game. But this announcement here, which happens one hour before the equity markets open on Friday, will cause a lot of volatility. So be careful. Right as that market opens, you're probably going to see a tremendous amount of volatility in our markets. And that, my friends, is your Monday morning must-knows. We'll see you next week.